Have you ever sat back and thought to yourself, is the NBA actually scripted? Do the refs, players, and coaches already know what's going to happen before it even happens? Has Adam Silver been manipulating us this whole time? Has he followed the footsteps of David Stern? All these questions will be answered in this new series, NBA Classified. In the first episode of NBA Classified, we will be talking about the NBA Draft Lottery. First, let's talk about what the NBA Draft Lottery actually is. The NBA implemented the Draft Lottery to discourage teams from intentionally losing games in order to secure top picks in the NBA Draft. Before the lottery system was introduced in 1985, the team with the worst record automatically received the first overall pick. This setup led to the accusations of teams tanking or purposely performing poorly to increase their chances of getting a top pick. By introducing the draft lottery, the NBA aimed to add an element of chance to the draft order, reducing the incentive for teams to deliberately lose games. The lottery randomly determines the order of the selection for the top picks among the teams that did not make the playoffs. With the teams with the worst records having higher probabilities of obtaining a higher pick, but no guarantee. But here's my thing. If a team wants to go out and lose games on purpose, that's on them. To go through a miserable season just to take a chance on a college kid takes guts. But the NBA felt like doing that didn't help the game. And they do have a point. So now you know the reason for the draft lottery. Let's get into the first potential rigging of the NBA draft lottery. This was the NBA's first draft lottery to be held. The golden boy of the 1985 NBA draft class was Patrick Ewing. He was the consensus first overall pick in the 1985 draft. After a tremendous career at Georgetown, where he averaged 15.3 points per game, 9.2 rebounds, 1.2 assists, and 3.4 blocks. So whoever ended up with Ewing would be getting a star. In the 1984-85 season, the three worst teams were the Indiana Pacers, Golden State Warriors, who both finished the record of 22 and 60, and the New York Knicks finished at 24 and 58. The Knicks ended up winning the lottery, and most of you are probably thinking, what's so crazy about that? They were a bottom three team. The thing is, the NBA was so desperate for good basketball to come out of New York because they knew that New York was one of the biggest money grabbers. So maybe the NBA would purposely give the number one pick to the Knicks. It goes deeper. I'm going to show you a clip from the lottery and pay close attention to see if you see anything. Did you catch it? I'll slow it down for you. The man who's inserting the envelopes strangely places the fourth envelope in the selection wheel. He had no problem placing the first three, but for some reason the fourth one, he kind of threw it against the side of the wheel. It doesn't look right at all. The theory is that the man putting the envelopes in the wheel deliberately tried to make a bent corner on the next envelope so Stern could feel for it. As you can see, there is a clear bent on the envelope that David Stern picks up. I mean, does it get more obvious than that? Stern could probably see the corner and knew the envelope was the one. Now, you might say, how could he even see the little bent corner? Well, I have a comeback for that. There is a very famous theory called the frozen envelope theory. People are led to believe that the NBA froze the Knicks ticket so Stern could just feel for the cold envelope in order for the Knicks to get the first pick in the draft. Now with that in mind, I want you to watch the clip again to see if anything looks fishy. Stern clearly grabs two envelopes and decides to take the bottom one. Why didn't he just grab one? It's because he needed to find the cold one. So he flips the envelopes upside down and drops the one he originally had on top and took the Knicks envelope out. Most conspiracies in sports have little to no convincing evidence, but the rigging of the 1985 draft lottery seems pretty conclusive. And of course, David Stern aggressively denied these accusations. In 2019, Duke phenom Zion Williamson was arguably the most hyped up prospect since LeBron James. Everyone was so eager to find out where Zion would end up, me included being a Knicks fan. Side note, Julius, we could really use you right now. Anyways, the thing with Zion was that any team who landed him, it would create such hype around that organization. Williamson would bring in so much draw to any team. 
In that lottery, the three teams with the highest odds to land a top pick at 40% was the Knicks, the Cavs, and the Phoenix Suns. But this time, the lottery wasn't rigged for the Knicks. The New Orleans Pelicans won the lottery with a 6% chance to land the number one overall pick and were given the chance to select Zion Williamson. You might be thinking, maybe they just got lucky. No, 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 they did not. Here's my theory why the lottery was rigged for the Pelicans. In that point in time of the NBA year, it was expected that the Pelican superstar face of the franchise, Anthony Davis, was going to request a trade. Davis wanted to be playing on a championship caliber team, and he made it clear he didn't want to be in New Orleans any longer. I'm led to believe that the NBA knew that if Davis was gone, the Pelicans would be in a dire situation. For a team like New Orleans, who isn't known for having a strong fan base, if they lost their only good thing, they'd be in shambles. I believe the NBA forced their hand and gave the Pelicans the number one pick to relieve themselves from having anything to worry about. The Pelicans were a franchise on the verge of going down a dark path. Giving the Pelicans a phenom like Zion Williamson would help in every aspect. This one could be a stretch, but I honestly do believe this happened. Maybe it's me just being a salty Knicks fan. No team in the NBA has experienced the guiding hand of the league quite like the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Cleveland Cavaliers drafted LeBron James in 2003, which Cleveland hoped this would be the man that would save their franchise and deliver a championship. But as we know, LeBron eventually left Cleveland to go to Miami. So here's where it gets interesting. The curious patterns of events that followed James' initial departure, mainly marked by his decision to join the Miami Heat, that raises eyebrows. Despite never finishing with the worst record in the league, the Cavaliers unexplainably found themselves with the number one pick in the NBA draft, not once, not twice, but three times in the span of four years, 2011, 2013, and 2014. Consider the odds. In 2011, they secured the top pick thanks to a mere 2.8% chance. In 2013, the odds were higher at 50.6% chance. So that's not as crazy. But in 2014, an astonishingly slim 1.7% chance delivered them the top spot. This is absolutely mind-blowing. Listen to what I'm about to say. The raw probability of this series of events unfolding as it did is a staggering 1,493 to 1. An outcome so improbable. Yet, there were the Cavaliers repeatedly defying the odds. In the wake of LeBron's departure, the franchise found itself desperate for need of cornerstone players, and it seemed the NBA was more than willing to offer them repeated opportunities to find one. Even as recently as April 2019, LeBron leaving the Cavaliers for the second time for the Los Angeles Lakers, the Cavs found itself in a 50-50 coin flip for the Phoenix Suns to determine who would officially receive the ping pong combinations for the second worst record in the league. Unsurprisingly, the coin landed in the favor of the Cavaliers, granting them another great position in the draft lottery. Coincidence? Maybe. But when such improbable occurrences accumulate with such regularity, it's hard not to wonder if there's a guiding hand at play behind these scenes, orchestrating the fate of certain franchises in ways that defy conventional logic. That's going to close out episode one of NBA Classified. We dove into the mystery behind the NBA draft lottery and uncovered some eyebrow-raising incidents that suggest there may be more than to meets the eye to how teams secure their picks. In episode two, you will hear how the NBA and Michael Jordan worked together to hide Jordan's gambling addiction to the world. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss it. Peace.